Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome back to Lazy Couch Thoughts. Car thoughts. Um, the trade deadline has come and gone, and the Pelicans got better? Yeah, I mean, they got better. There's really nothing else you can say about it. They were pretty quiet. Lonzo Ball's still on the team. We'll talk about that. But the one move that they did make, traded J.J. Redick to the Mavs. Uh, they instantly got back. They got a pick for him, and then they also got two very good defensive wings. Um, two... Our, our our wings defense is a lot better now. They instantly become the two best defend, defenders we have in the forward position, which is perfect. We need that so bad. I'm really I was really hoping they would make a move like this, help get some of the defensive pressure off of Brandon Ingram, uh, try and get some of that pressure off of Zion too, so they can go to work. Now it is time to stop caring about feelings, stop caring about potential moves, and it's time to just play the best five. Lonzo Ball is still here. I love it. I love Lonzo. I love his game. I think he fits in very well. He's very much kind of em embraced the role since Zion became the primary ball handler. And he's been just exceeding expectation of what you would expect from him um, just in general. Like it, it, with everything he's been doing this season, he's uh, making more three-pointers than Steph Curry, shooting at a higher percentage than Steph Curry because – He's kind of being like a 3 and D type player. And obviously, he's kind of handling the ball in transition. But ever since Zion kind of took over as the primary ball handler, Zion, B.I., and Lonzo are all doing like stupid numbers. Like stupid numbers. Like they're playing great together. Now we got to get Bledsoe off the court. He didn't find a home. But his contract really isn't much guaranteed after this year. So there's a legit chance that he just might not see the floor anymore. In a perfect world, we have Alonzo, Keel Alexander-Walker, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, Steven Adams lineup. That's that's the lineup here in a perfect world. Then you have Kira coming off the bench. You have Josh Hart coming off the bench. You have, uh, you know, the two new guys coming off the bench, James Johnson and Wes. Like, you have uh, Jackson Hayes and uh, Billy Herman, Herman Gomez like coming off the bench. And Bledsoe just never sees the court. That's like a perfect world here for us. Because he is just so terrible. It's not even funny how terrible it is. And it's not even funny how much he doesn't want to be here. It's just a lack of effort. This is a guy... Like, every time I see him, I think of the uh, Spider-Man meme... Uh, I mean, the Harry Potter meme saying, uh, how dare you stand where he stood? I'm talking about Drew Holiday. Because this is a guy that stole all defensive player, like all defensive team awards from Drew Holiday his entire career, like the last few years. And he's garbage. He is terrible. He doesn't play defense. He doesn't try. He doesn't fight through screens. He can't hit shots. Every time he gets the ball, they just double Zion. They're just like, yeah, like here, like we're going to go play Zion. Uh, you, you, yeah, you're not going to hit a shot regardless. So yeah, that's that's not that's not gonna happen here. You're 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 good. Yeah, definitely. So hopefully in a perfect world, he never sees the court again. Uh, we start treating him the same way that we treated JJ, and he just leaves. And that would have been perfect. I wish we would just bought out his contract. I, there might still be time. I don't know, but I do not want to see him play basketball on my favorite team again. I need to see Nikhil Alexander Walker, who has been earning minutes, and Kira Lewis Jr., who's been earning minutes, playing over them. I'm very excited that Lonzo is still here. I'm happy we didn't have to trade him. He says a lot. Like, his dad's the only person ever says he doesn't want to be in New Orleans. And his dad doesn't matter because Lonzo cut his dad off a long time ago. I don't even know if they have a relationship anymore. But he said for a long time now that he wants to stay in New Orleans for his career. He wants to be here long term. He loves Zion. He loves B.I. And B.I. and Zion says the same things about Lonzo. Saying, like, we love this dude. Like, we're the ones that try and hype him up. We try to convince him, like, yo, like, you got to you gotta shoot that. You know, you got you to gotta make that play. Like, like, you got this. Like, you're good. Like, you're good. It's that kind of relationship that they have that if those three can develop and, like, especially Zion and B.I., like, they're looking like they're going to be superstars in this league. It's going to attract other players to come play with them and go win a championship. That's why I'm not too worried about this. And we have the capital to, you know, make a trade. We have, we're going to have the room, supposedly, like, you know, two years from now, whenever, you know, Zion's really ready to take the league over, we'll have the cap space to go sign another superstar. Now, I don't know how much we're willing to pay Lonzo. I wish we just extend him before the restricted free agency period, because I feel like the Knicks are going to offer him way too much money. At that point, he's going to walk for nothing, or we're going to do like a sign and trade. But yeah, if that's the case, if the Knicks want to come over here and really give him $25 to $26 million, he's going to bounce. He's, 
David Griffin's not going to match that. I don't even know if the Pelicans can match that without going into a luxury tax. And are you really going to luxury tax for this team? A fringe playoff team? I wouldn't. So it just kind of depends on that. I really wish we could lock him up, you know, somewhere between like, you know, five years, 100 million, 110 million. That would be, you know, perfect. But he wants to be here long term. Griffin, make it happen. Don't let him walk for nothing. And I'm pretty excited the Pelicans didn't do anything too drastic. Uh, they've shown a lot of patience throughout this entire process since Griffin got here. So hopefully they, it's not just patience. Hopefully it's patience and not complacency. Hopefully it's like there's a certain moves that they have lined up that they want to make down the line and not just, hey, I'm going to wait around and hope something happens. But yeah, I, I just, I just got to trust them. I got to trust that they're going to do the right thing. I'm excited Alonzo's still here. JJ's in a better situation now. He's going to go play for a playoff team, even though he's been terrible this season. And the Pelicans get upgrades on the defensive side of the ball that we desperately needed. That's pretty much it for today. But uh, yeah, there's a couple other big trades around, but right now I only care about the Pelicans. See, it's Pelicans time. We're about to make a run for the playoffs, so that play-in game, and then we're going to go win it all. Probably not. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Have a happy Friday. And check out the description below to go check out some of my uh, other work. Go check out my most recent podcast interview with Steve Peralt. That was awesome. Great interview. You check it out on YouTube. And I will see you guys next week. Peace.